Well, happy Friday, everybody. I'm Nick Slavic. I'm the proprietor of the Nick Slavic Painting and Restoration Company. I'm also the host of this show, Ask a Painter Live. It's a weekly live Facebook show where I use my over two decades of experience uh, as a craftsman, a painter, a restorationist, a lover of homes to answer any of your questions that you have, whether you're a homeowner or a pro. This is a forum where we can discuss uh, homeowners. What have you always wanted to ask a pro? And pro, we're here for coding science, we're here for entrepreneurship, apprenticeship programs, business, the nuts and bolts of what we do every day with our lives. So, um, next to a highway, on a construction site, at the 3M uh, World Headquarters here today, uh, Ask a Painter is coming to you a little bit live. I was not taken hostage, but I was in the bowels of this beautiful facility here, talking to all sorts of people who love adhesives, uh, fillers, coatings, uh, tape, everything else. And I'm gonna go through a little bit of that later here today. So I apologize if there's a little bit of background noise. We'll see what we can do about that. So any of you guys who have questions here, type them in down below. I'd be happy to get to those uh, during it or, or after the thing here. I will run through a couple of things with you guys quick here. At the end of October, I'm gonna be uh, in Illinois presenting a master's class to other craftsmen uh, about uh, enameling kitchen cabinets that have been previously enameled. Uh, what it is, uh, it's a master's class for other professionals through the PDCA, the Painting and Decorating Contractors of America, uh, and it is titled The Perfect Kitchen, where I use science, as much science as I can muster from the uh, chemists and the uh, bioscientists that I talk to, have, uh, have at my disposal. And uh, I came up with a uh, multiple hour presentation. It's, uh, it's a PowerPoint presentation, but it's about eight gigabytes worth of time-lapse video, GoPro footage, uh, graphs, charts, everything how I break down and do my uh, kitchen enameling from start to finish uh, and in some cases I even present uh, how I make money on it too depending on if the people want me to so here we are 3M headquarters I have a um, the PDCA contractor question of the week this week uh, is brought to you uh, by your friendly PDCA the painting and decorating contractors of America uh, this one comes from uh, a young progressive contractor I met in Cleveland uh, not long ago uh, he's based up in Vancouver, Dustin Zapancic. He runs an unbelievable, uh, really awesome, high quality painting outfit. Uh, if you don't follow him on Instagram and Dreamscape Painting or Dustin Zapancic, do it on Instagram, uh, do it on Facebook. You'll see some of the most unbelievable houses you've ever seen in your life. And he gets to work in those every day. So, uh, question from Dustin. Uh, I'd like to hear what types of uh, tape you use and where you use them. And I thought, you know what? This uh, question has been brewing with me for a while here. Uh, I thought, uh, what better place than to talk about tape than at 3M? Uh, you know, the people who, uh, who invented masking tape after all. So, I'm gonna go through just the basics of some of the stuff here. If you guys have any questions about this stuff, uh, today, this morning, uh, got here early this morning, and we, uh, we did a whole bunch of stuff in their lab. Uh, we talked about all the different tapes available. Uh, we did a bunch of demonstrations with uh, wood fillers, bondos, things like that, uh, abrasives. We did a ton of talk, demonstrations on abrasives, some really, really interesting technology coming out of this. Uh, and uh, it was very interesting. But today, we're just gonna concentrate on the tape part of this here. So I'm gonna walk you through a few of uh, my uses. So obviously everybody knows blue. Uh, this is the bread and butter of our trade. Um, you know, all the trucks are constantly stocked with this. This is the general all-purpose tape. We use it inside, we use it outside. Uh, about the only thing I don't use it for regularly is uh, taping off woodwork where the walls meet the woodwork. Uh, we'll go over that next tape in a little bit here. But otherwise, I don't need to tell you pros anything you don't already know about this. All I know is that uh, in almost every interior exterior situation, uh, some application of this will get you through there. My favorite is usually about an inch and a half, give or take. Uh, the three quarter stuff is fine for taping interior trim, but I enjoy the little bit wider stuff, two inch. You know, don't really need the extra stuff there. Uh, inch and a half seems to be really good. It's the all around excellent utility tape. Uh, the next, if you take blue tape, uh, add a little technology to it, you get uh, tape with edge lock on it, where uh, the coating, uh, there's a, a coating with the adhesive in here that actually stops paint. It, it coagulates it and stops it. Uh, this tape actually has it, uh, which I just found out today, instead of just on the edges all the way through. Kind of interesting, something I didn't know. So if you cut it like this, if you cut it lengthwise, stop it here, you still have the uh, edge lock technology on there. 
uh, which is which is kind of interesting. Something that you know, as a contractor, I feel from the field, but you don't necessarily uh, know. You can't quantify because you're not the person who came up with this. So um, edge lock here. Uh, I have used this stuff outside too with great luck, and it just uh, you know uh, sometimes you don't need it. Some of the exterior coatings because of the heat and other things dry quick enough where you don't really need it. Uh, the edge lock technology, but for interior applications, things like that, if you want those clean, crisp lines, that's usually what I end up using. Uh, the next one, uh, this is a, a little more specific tape. It's, uh, it, think of it as more of like a delicate surface tape. It's uh, walls and wood floors. Uh, it is a, it's a thinner tape. If you, if you know what a standard cray paper tape is like, it's got a, if, if, you know, if you think of cray paper from a party decoration, it's a, it's a very refined version of that. This one is actually a, a more refined version of the standard cray paper here. So it's a little bit thinner. So when you're doing decorative patterns on walls, things like that, uh, it won't leave those super thick paint ridges that you have to sand out later, you know, when you, when you want to get rid of the decorative stuff. Uh, the adhesive is a little bit different as well. Uh, my biggest application for these are you have existing wood floors. Uh, wood floors expand and contract. The polyurethane or the varnish that sits on top of them uh, sometimes gets brittle. When you go to, you know, in, in my master's class about refinishing kitchens, we, we rosin paper off the floor, seal the floor so it's a complete surgical suite inside. And where we make the mating from the paper to this is uh, the delicate tape. It, it deals uh, much better and it plays better with uh, the existing wood floors. Those finishes, after the wood expands and contracts, it gets brittle, it can come up. Anybody who's ever taped over a poorly finished uh, wood floor, whether they didn't let the stain dry enough or they pushed the coats, you'll get some uh, polyurethane or varnish peeling up. Usually not the painter's fault. If we're only using masking tape and your floor finish comes off, that's definitely the problem for the uh, floor finisher. But the homeowner doesn't like it either way. So this will help alleviate that, and this is where I end up using the, you know, the delicate surface tape, uh, that mating uh, right next to the baseboard when you're painting trim. I'll lay my rosin paper there. In about half the instances, I will get this stuff to, to actually stick to the rosin paper. It does it very well. Uh, in some of the cases where it's humid or something like that, it won't stick. I'll lay down my delicate surface, uh, run my rosin paper up to it, and then I'll use standard blue or even just tan tape, uh, the standard uh, high-tack uh, tan tape to make the mating from there to there. And that does a really good job. It seals it all out, keeps the wood floor clean, and then you're not having high-tack uh, tan tape next to the floor. Uh, the next sort of uh, types of uh, tape to think about are some new kind of ultra-premium tapes like this where they have an actual kind of vinyl or, or rubberized sort of uh, backing to them like this water resistant, waterproof. Uh, in the lab here, they showed me a piece of, uh, piece of uh, I think, plastic or plexiglass wrapped with this stuff, submerged in water the entire time I was there. And, you know, you take it out and you, you peel it off. Nothing is seeped underneath. Uh, the tape comes off clear. The, the adhesive doesn't stick to there. It's, it's, a, it's a pretty good uh, clean release. Uh, this stuff tears perfectly straight. It's got a whole bunch of uh, tiny little sections in it like that. And if you uh, tear it like a piece of paper like this, it'll tear a perfect 90 degree angle every time. Uh, the Platinum, and then they have an exterior version, uh, a similar thing to this in an exterior version. Uh, this Platinum actually has the, uh, uh, it's edge lock technology, but it's not the same, uh, I found out today, as the other tape. Uh, it's actually the, the physical nature of this backing, this tape, plus the adhesive they use, creates about the same effect, uh, the same effect as you know, the edge lock technology tape. They just achieve it in two different ways. One uses a different backing, the other one a standard uh, paper backing. So um, actually, I just finished yesterday on a gas station uh, in Elko New Market. Uh, we used a lot of this on the outside of it, around the areas. We we're spraying a metal finish on the outside of a tin building. Uh, we, we use our standard plasticking uh, sort of, you know, prep around there. Use this to mate a lot of the surfaces and uh, the senior apprentice that I was with, one of my most seniors, he didn't know he was using a different kind of tape. Obviously he found out, but I didn't say, hey, test this tape out and do this. But he came back and he said, you know, this is a pretty interesting thing. We're, we're getting this to stick to metal, to glass, to tin, to this and that. Sticks perfectly, beautiful line. We even had a little bit of dew there in the morning and it's still stuck, everything was really good. It's not obviously gonna to stick to a wet surface, but for that humid morning, I think it was 90 degrees and, and very humid during the day, it stuck to all that stuff perfectly. And 
when we went to take it down, this stuff comes off, uh, if you tape it right, in kind of large sections. So when you're up there pulling down stuff and you really can't be on the siding for long because you just painted it, that's a really good way. You get up there, you yank it, and a lot of it comes down like that. So um, when I was given some of this to try out to see if I can find a place for it in my business, immediately the first thing my apprentices came back to me and said was, we're up on a 32-foot ladder. We got the brace on it to stand us back from the house a little bit. The house is done being painted. We have plastic, uh, the, the, the hand masker stuff over the windows, and we have this stuff around it. You grab it in the corner and you pull it, and the whole thing comes off almost every time. Where, you know, for, for people who work on very long, let's say you're there for a week or two, and the standard blue tape or tan tape or something has sort of stuck itself to the vinyl windows. Uh, a lot of times you can get it out in large chunks, but for anybody who's ever done this, you know in the upper corner of that window, 32 feet in the air, there's gonna be that one little chunk of blue tape and you're gonna to have to move the ladder or you're gonna to have to climb higher and you, anytime I can keep my apprentices off of 32 foot ladders and on the ground, that's what I normally do. So very interesting, um, very good results I've had with this on this last project, uh, stopping some of the industrial metal finishes that I was spraying onto this building. So kind of interesting. Now, one of the more interesting uh, things that I learned today and the thing that I'm probably most anxious besides some other fillers and things to try is um, human condition tape. Now, at a passing glance, when I see this at my uh, supply store, I think, well, good. Everybody in Florida is now taken care of, but you know, I don't, I don't under, you know, if I gotta pay extra for a roll of tape, I wanna make sure that it's something useful. Um, in talking with uh, the nerds who do this stuff here, uh, this actually has a very interesting application for everybody who's been using uh, Sherwin-Williams uh, Emerald Urethane, the new hybrid technology, the Pro Classic Hybrid, Benjamin Moore Advanced, things like that. For humid conditions, for not fully cured yet, where the paint has a tiny bit of moisture to let out yet, this stuff is actually made for that too. So the typical application is, uh, you know, when I did my entire uh, cottage cabin project, the hashtag cottage cabin project up north, we used uh, emerald urethane on the entire um, ceiling, beadboard, trim, windows, doors, everything in the house. And uh, the recoat time was of such, four hours, that we were able to spray, prep, and spray everything in this house in one day. And with these new hybrid technologies, we all know that uh, mainly the downside to them is drying times, cure times, things like that, whereas opposed to lacquer, it's nearly instant or 30 minutes compared to that. So the problem is we spray all of the trim, doors, uh, windows, everything else in this house twice in a day. We filled that house with humidity. The trim has a lot of curing yet to do. But since we're way up in the northern wilderness in Minnesota, I need to repaint these walls the next day or start painting these walls. So what I do is uh, very delicately <laughs> is uh, tape the woodwork and you hope for the best. 10% of the tape will slough off and fall off because it's a humid corner of the house. The paint hasn't let off enough moisture for the tape to sit fully. This stuff, I'm told, is there to fix that stuff. So. As soon as I get a, uh, a chance to do another large application of a hybrid trim enamel, which will actually be uh, next month, October, I'm starting a, uh, a brand new estate uh, built from the ground up, uh, this will be employed in full force and uh, I will definitely tell you if it works or not. The other application they mentioned to me is, even though this is not the delicate surface tape, it's meant to stick to those like fully, or excuse me, not fully cured surfaces. So if you have accent walls, if you have you know some decorative uh, geometric patterns that you need to do in a bedroom, something like that, this one, uh, if the paint isn't fully cured, same day, you do a couple coats of a base color, want to do some geometric patterns. Uh, they told me that this is a, uh, is a good alternative as well for that too, to try it out. So I am going to do that. Um, I'm going to go through one more thing, uh, something interesting. Uh, Dustin, uh, I can't thank you enough uh, for all the uh, sort of uh, time you took at the residential forum. Thank you for this tape question, but thank you for all the time you spent with me at the residential forum. And uh, I really thought about my business in a different way after talking to you. So that was, uh, that was probably more valuable than, uh, than you know, and I thank you for that. Uh, I'm going to get to a couple of these questions here. I want to go over one more thing here. Uh, something that I was... Uh, interested in trying uh, the uh, wall repair stuff. Now, the, the idea behind this spackle is a very quick drying, fiber reinforced uh, putty uh, for your walls. So if you have, 
you know, the <laughs> I always use the example of you have the uh, doorknob hole in the wall that the homeowner forgot to tell you about and you show up to the job site, it's a one day project and they say, oh yeah, by the way, just patch that. They have no idea how much uh, time and everything else it takes uh, to patch something like that. So basically you get up there, uh, these actually come in just the putty or they actually have a kit. They have a uh, wall a mounting, uh, wall backing bracket you can slip behind the wall and with adhesive pull there and uh, you can use this. This is the typical half inch drywall section here. Uh, this actually has fibers. Uh, uh, they would not tell me what the fibers were but they do work. Uh, the one thing that I did not know about this product and that you really won't find with a lot of the advertising here is there are glass spheres in here, or think of ceramic or glass, things like that, that actually make this thing strong, and it makes it uh, resistance to flashing. Uh, think of you know bowling balls and golf balls in here. Uh, big bowling balls to make it strong, the little uh, golf balls to fill in the spaces. So there's a whole bunch of interesting stuff going on here. It's, uh, it's a very fine sanding mud, which I enjoy. You know, a lot of vinyl spackles, they dry quickly, but they don't really sand all that nice. What we all want to do is use lightweight mud, plus three, you know, stuff like that, because it sands razor sharp. The only problem is, it makes a big mess, it's not structural, it shrinks, and if you put on a big lump of it, not only will it shrink, it'll take forever to dry. So, uh, this stuff is supposedly combining a lot of the good traits of all those things. The interesting thing they showed me, and I forgot to grab another sample of it, this is just a puck of the fiber reinforced. It's super lightweight. They also had a, a puck of vinyl mud. And uh, over the course of a week, this thing is fully cured. Well, this, this cured much quicker than that, but they showed me the vinyl mud. After a week, it was still wet inside and it crumbled apart and it shrunk. This stuff here, no shrink whatsoever, uh, and it takes uh, an unbelievable amount of strength. I think they said 150 pounds of force to break one of these things. So a combination of the glass uh, ceramic beads in there and the hair, you can do a one day fix on those door holes. You put that backer back there, you put it on there, get it dry, maybe do a quick skim, sand, and you're ready to go. And this stuff, you're not shorting your homeowner. You're not just jamming a bunch of vinyl mud in the wall. So we've used this on a whole bunch of applications. I have yet to do it on a doorknob one, but I will definitely give you feedback when I do. But this stuff is about 10 times lighter, lighter than uh, regular vinyl mud, and it's way stronger. So very interesting. And the reason I came here today was, you know, we all use this stuff in the field. I understand, you know, I can surmise from here what kind of mud it is. Yes, it's got some fiber in it, but things like learning about the ceramic or the glass beads in it helps you understand these things better so that when you talk to your homeowners, uh, you can actually say, well, I actually have a specific mud that's structural. You can put a nail in this, you can put a screw in this, you can uh, drill it through. I mean, it's it's a quite amazing sort of thing when you compare it to a lot of the stuff we're using. So definitely, um, this is another tool for the painters. A lot of the stuff that I talk about on this show is not a end-all be-all. It's not gonna replace everything you do now with some magical thing. This is an awesome tool uh, that we can use. And especially when it's in small containers like this, you can throw it in your interior totes, and when you get there, if for that proverbial doorknob that somebody forgot to uh, tell you about, uh, this is a way to get that done timely, and you're not shorting the homeowner. So, interesting uh, from what I saw today. So. All right, I'm going to try to scroll through here. Uh, it is very hot here in Minnesota, and my screen has dimmed. So, I will try to see if I can read. Uh, I've seen a double, Danny, I've seen a double-sided tape come out a while ago but haven't seen it in stores. Any news or feedback? A um, Couple things, uh, specifically, uh, I have been testing out a double-sided tape. It is not from 3M. Uh, it has some very interesting applications. Um, the only downside to a lot of that stuff is the adhesive, and uh, the main application I was gonna use it for is either plasticking uh, exterior windows or plasticking the interior cabinets. The only problem is, when you do that, you would still have to cut, you can lay down your double-sided tape, but you would still have to cut your plastic in a perfect line so you get a clean paint line. Uh, but those double-sided tapes, like if you're hanging plastic or if you're joining plastic to plastic or if you're going, you know, maybe uh, plastic to rosin paper in the kitchens that I tent off, that would be a good application for now. Or if you, uh, the, the tests that I've been doing for myself are, I'm trying to get my apprentices to uh, plastic off the interiors of cabinets for painting quicker. 
So my thought is, you take your double-sided tape, do your ring around it, maybe a half inch back, stick your uh, plastic to it real quick, and then take your blue tape and sort of make the joint between. That'll leave you the clean line, it'll seal it all up. Uh, currently, you know, we sort of take the hand masker, we put it up, we put it down, tack it in the corners, seal it around, and then another round of blue tape. This way, uh, if they get a hold of it, and in theory it might be quicker, it might be something to look forward to. So. Uh, and I apologize guys that because of the heat the screen is dim so I'm gonna go through here and try to try to read some of it Todd Hill. Thank you for the comment Russ Perry Hello to you too. Juliano Alcantara my good friend from Brazil um, Juliano you would get a kick out of this here I know that you love your 3m stuff down there and uh, you have a hard time getting some of it uh, This is where it all is and it's been like a kid in a candy store here I got to walk through the middle of the Death Star and see all the goodies they had here today. So it's been a wonderful, wonderful thing here. So, uh, how do you feel about doing 8,200 square foot house for me this winter? I would gladly do that. Are you kidding me? Um, in a couple weeks, I'm actually headed down in New Ulm to do a uh, restoration of a Victorian mansion. I'm taking all of my apprentices with me. We're staying uh, in some old historic houses and bed and breakfast, and we're doing that. Uh, later on this fall too, we'll be going up to the hashtag cottage cabin project, probably putting the finishing touches on it. And I've been to islands in Florida, I've been to Utah, I've been to California. Uh, for those I trust, uh, I will travel. So, Todd, uh, you be careful what you uh, what you offer because uh, I have a bow and arrow, and I'd be happy to come uh, chase after some of those elk that you have out there too, if the seasons uh, align. So, uh, yeah, happily, maybe we can share a couple tricks of the trades here. Chad, thank you for watching. Mike Danahy, thank you for watching. Russ Perry, can you repeat the product name on the mud you were just talking about? Oh yeah, no problem. The uh, 3M wall repair. Uh, if you're if you're looking for this specific product, just say what's the 3M stuff that's got the uh, fibers in it, uh, the reinforced stuff, and they can get that for you. So it's just called wall repair fiber reinforced compound, uh, gold lid. See if I can see some more. Sorry guys, it's it's uh, dimming out pretty good here. Kevin Ward, hope to see some of those products in Ireland soon. And you know it's it's funny when you're you know 40 minutes from uh, the 3M World headquarters, you sort of take for granted that this stuff is available and all this and that. But uh, I sincerely feel for you people. If nothing else, if you could get a hold of a hand masker and some uh, expandable plastic uh, that changes your life. Not only do you do a better product, it is so quick uh, and so easy to do that stuff that uh, I really feel for you guys who don't have ready access to it. But, uh, Kevin, uh, hopefully you can find, uh, you know, with this brave new world we're living in, uh, if you contact the kind people here, uh, they might be able to tell you where you can get it or uh, with Amazon, might be, uh, might be a good thing here, so. Oh, Christian Militello, a great, uh, great question you had this week, man. I was going to use it for my Ask a Painter. You just posted it to my timeline, but I thought it's so timely, and it's all I've been thinking about for a year. I thought I'd just post on that there. Thank you so much for that question. That was such a thoughtful thing, and uh, I know we're right in it together. We're always thinking about how we can be better, how we can help the people that work for us and who we work for, and it's great to have other contractors like you, especially that we would share their knowledge. You know, most, most other painters I come into contact with, you get the feeling like we're probably all enemies. Uh, Christian taught me, uh, in, in conjunction with, uh, with another great contractor, almost everything I know about uh, the soft washing and the, uh, the wood stripping and the chemistry and stuff, and he was, he was nice enough to share. So it's the least I can do is share a couple thoughts about business with you so thanks a lot Russ you are welcome sir very custom ridge beams and rooms with tongue and groove ceilings ah what is that level four finish on walls and ceilings well listen careful Todd if you uh, if you make it any more interesting to me I'm just gonna show up so uh, Lewis it's available at Home Depot uh, yes uh, Home Depot would probably be a good place probably widespread for that for you uh, um, I'm guessing and, and what you want to look for too especially if you've got a Home Depot near you is uh, look for this but they also have it in kits with a, uh, uh, a spackle knife and they also have that uh, really cool black uh, backer thing too it's a piece of plastic it's corrugated you can actually roll it up you stick it into the wall it's got a cord on it you peel off the uh, adhesive back and you can actually expand it and then pull it up uh, into the wall and it adheres. So it's, it's a really cool sort of thing. Uh, and if you guys haven't used it yet, just give it a try. Um, you know, it's another tool for, for the painter here, so. All right. 
Todd Hill starts in three months. <laughs> yeah, Todd uh, happens in three months, let the guys work while we ski. The only problem is I probably like painting more than skiing, so uh, maybe one of my apprentices will go with you, but uh, you be careful what you offer, Todd. Uh, we may pack up the work trucks and just convoy out there. So thanks, everybody. Uh, this has been an absolute treat being here today. These people are more than gracious to have me here. There's no reason they should let me inside their building, but they did. And I talked to a whole bunch of people whose lives revolve around these products and all they want to do is further technology, which is super interesting here. And uh, this is one of the most impressive places I've, uh, I've ever visited in my professional career. So thank you everybody for watching. If uh, the questions keep rolling in about these products, if you have any more, I'll get back on here this afternoon and I'll answer a bunch of specific questions. But thank you guys again for watching and spreading the word. And uh, as always, anything you want to hear me talk about, anything you want to see me do, put it here, send it to me in a private message, and we'll take care of it. So from the 3M World Headquarters here, Thank you, everybody. Have a productive week, and uh, have a good weekend.